five to five and a half weeks, 45 to 50 degrees with concomitant chemotherapy. And this is backed by the German rectal trial. And we also have the short course free of radiotherapy, which is probably historically uh, older. It is 25 degrees in five fractions over just one week. And it is biologically equivalent to 44 degrees in 22 fractions. So we are not giving any low dose at all. It is an equivalent dose. And this has been backed by the Dutch trial. There has been several radiation trials, short course radiation trials in the pre-TME eras and also the post-TME eras. And it, the short course radiation therapy has been accepted as, a, as an accepted method of treatment. So even now we are at that crossroad, what is the best mode of treatment or rather what is the preferred mode of radiation therapy? So one slide about the revising the differences between the short course radiation and the long course CTRT. So short course radiation is 25 grays in five fractions over one week. And it is immediately over three to seven days, it is followed by surgery. And since there is no gap between the treatment and the surgery, so there is no downsizing of the tumor. And for the same reason, acute toxicities are obscured and late toxicities had been seen in about less than 10% of the patients. And needless to say, concomitant chemotherapy was not added. And what about long course radiation? It is 45 to 50 grays over 28 fractions, about two grays per fraction over a long duration of five weeks. And we deliver about 72, 84 grays. Over six to 12 weeks later, we go ahead with surgery. And since there has been the chemotherapy and also the duration between the long course treatment and the surgery, there is a downsizing of the tumor. And for the same reason, acute toxicities were much higher than the short course radiation and the late toxicities have been the same. So there have been many studies. We shall be looking at some of the studies which are relevant for my talk. So short course preoperative radiotherapy versus surgery. We know we have read the Swedish trial and the Dutch trial. And the Swedish trial was the one trial which had showed some benefit in the overall survival. Local recurrence rates and other benefits were seen in both of these trials. So, but our point of talk is preoperative radiation versus chemo radiation. So, what are the trials? There are some trials which we, I am going to talk about are the Australian intergroup trial and the Polish trials. So, Polish trial in short, Polish trial one. This actually is a, a study between the short course radiation therapy in the short course radiation and followed in one week by surgery. And also this was compared to the conventional NACTRT, followed by surgery in four to six weeks. They compared, they wanted to see the local recurrence rate and the uh, between the both of the studies. So it was seen that maybe more if long course radiation therapy, I'm sorry, I have come back to the, sorry. Yeah. So I think we are better with using our fingers. So this actually uh, compared the short course radiation therapy followed by surgery and the CTRT. And they found there was no difference in the sphincter preservation rate, local recurrence, overall survival, or the late toxicities. Similarly, the TROG trial was also a similar study and it compared the short course radiation therapy followed immediately by surgery and the CTRT followed by surgery. And they looked at the local recurrence rate and they saw that the long course radiation therapy could probably be more effective in reducing local recurrence for distal tumors. But there was no difference in the distant recurrence, relapse-free survival, overall survival, or the late toxicities between these two groups. So between these two studies, there was no difference in the local control. There was no difference in the overall survival. There was no difference in late toxicities though there was significant acute toxicities which were more in the long course CTRT arm. 
sphincter preservation was also found to be same in both these studies. So what was the inference or the answers from these two studies? Both CTRT, long course and uh, long, uh, short course radiation followed immediately by surgery. There was no difference in the sphincter preservation rates, recurrence rates and the survival. There was no difference in the toxicities. Acute toxicities were higher in the CTRT arm and no downstaging was expected in the short course radiation therapy arm when it was followed immediately by surgery. So then when both of the arms were comparable, so why not the short course and why to go for the long course radiation which stretches over five weeks time? So what was the rationale behind the short course preoperative radiation? It was short and flexible. It was short, accelerated, and hypofractionated radiation. And according to the LQ model, the equivalent dose was given to the patient in terms of acute and late effects. And of course, it had the advantage is probably the accelerated repopulation was avoided. So what are the advantages? This is a short look at the advantages what NACTRT arm had. It is probably using our common sense, it was probably because of the addition of the chemotherapy, which was thought to prevent micrometastasis. And also because of the addition of the chemotherapy, probably the downstaging was much more, which was not seen in the short course radiation therapy arm. And when the downstaging was possible, so probably the organ sparing potential was more, and there was a potential for curative resection also. And this also showed that the sphincter preservation probabilities were probably higher. So these were the advantages in the NACT arm, NACTRT arm, which was not seen in the short course radiation therapy arm followed immediately by surgery. But what surpassed, what in short course radiation therapy surpassed long course CTRT was the excellent compliance. So the compliance rate was more than 90%. So in that case, the disadvantages which the short course radiation therapy arm had because of the lack of the uh, chemotherapy addition and also because of the lack of the short interval between the radiation and the surgery, there were more studies coming up, which I will be describing later on, which, which could answer these, which could direct to these disadvantages with the short course radiation therapy had, that is no downstaging, potential for organ sparing was minimum and there was an, no, no chance of curative resection, which was probably less. So how do you select the patient? So basically, as a nutshell, in a nutshell, short course radiation therapy could be offered to all resectable cancer rectum patients in the mid rectum or the upper lower, uh, lower mid rectum. And uh, these were the cancers where the sphincter was not involved and CRM was free. So these were the ideal patients who could be taken up for the short course radiation therapy. On the other hand, long course radiation therapy can be offered to all the previous patients, of course, as we conventionally did, but also for T4B tumor patients, T3 large, T3B tumor patients, and where the CRM was involved or threatened. This was further endorsed by the Polish trial. This trial looked at T4, T3 rectal cancer patients, which were fixed in the lower part of the rectum. And he compared the short course radiation therapy and the CTRT in these tumors. And here, you, if you can see that three cycles of chemotherapy was added between the short course radiation and the surgery, that is, there was a delayed surgery. So what did we see over here? Here we saw that there was no difference in the radical resection rate, overall survival, local control, but the T3, T4 tumor patients, they did well, all those who received the long course radiation therapy. So the better downstaging was seen in these group of patients who received long course radiation therapy. So that brings us to the question, when do we evaluate for surgery? That is, immediately after the short course radiation, or do we wait for some time? And if we wait for some time, how long do we wait? These are the guidelines which we find in our, um, uh, in our inter uh, internets. Long course radiation, the ESMO says six to eight weeks, then go, go for surgery. NCCN says five to 12 weeks, more generalized. Short course radiation, we have seven to 10 days after radiation, and also six to eight weeks after radiation. And there are some who says 
uh, more than eight weeks, about 11 weeks. So why are we talking about this? Because tumor regression is probably a prognostic factor because there are studies which do say that like the Stockholm 3 trial, it does say better tumor control and survival is seen with patients who have achieved pathological complete response rate. So this is the trial I was talking to you about, that the Stockholm 3 trial, and this said that tumor regression after radiation therapy and good response, if there is a good response or a pathological complete response rate, it is associated with the superior overall survival and lesser time to tumor recurrence. Now, if we go back to the past in 1999, there were trials which had addressed the same issue, where, what should be the waiting time. So this is a very uh, old trial, but it is worthwhile coming back to this trial even now. So this is a trial. So this also showed that longer difference, longer interval between the preoperative radiation and surgery is required for better tumor re re response. Later on in, uh, in recent days, there are more trials addressing this issue. And there was a meta-analysis which showed that yes, longer waiting, classically six to eight weeks, did increase the pathological complete response rate by 6%. But this needed to be um, uh, backed by a randomized control trial. Uh, so in 2016, we had the GRECAR-6 trial, and this to address this issue. And this actually compared between a waiting period of seven weeks or 11 weeks. So it was seen quite, uh, 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 it was seen that waiting for 11 weeks was uh, probably good. It did cause a tumor reduction, but at the same time, the longer waiting did have quite a lot of post-operative morbidities, and it was the surgical resection was very difficult. Next came the Stockholm 3 trial. This was probably the answer to God's answer to whatever we wanted to know, that is what should be the optimal fractionation of radiation therapy and what should be the timing to surgery. So it probably brought us the answers. So this was uh, short course radiation followed immediately by TME, short course radiation followed by surgery in four to six weeks and 25 fr fractions of radiation therapy, and that is the conventional fractionation of radiation therapy followed by TME. And this proved that the risk of post-operative complications was significantly lower with the short course radiation therapy with a delay. And this, the authors further, they went ahead to recommend short course radiation therapy with a delay in surgery as a very useful alternative to conventional short course radiation with immediate surgery. So later on, uh, we had the RAPIDO trial, and this is probably the latest trial which we are always backing upon. And this is the short course radiation therapy. So this actually said that the short course radiation therapy, by the time the RAPIDO trial came, the short course radiation therapy with a delayed surgery had become an accepted method of treatment. But then RAPIDO trial, this thought that this trial actually thought that what to do in this waiting period of about three weeks. So they added chemotherapy. So the idea was to answer two questions that whether a delay in surgery with the addition of chemotherapy is worthwhile and also it compared to the adjuvant radiation uh, adjuvant chemotherapy if at all it was required so this was the uh, trial looked like and the conclusion was that the observed decreased probability of disease related treatment failure in the experimental group is probably indicates that there's an increased efficacy of the preoperative chemotherapy when we compare to the adjuvant chemotherapy. And this is where we stand now. And we are probably looking at treatment of rectal cancer in selected patients with short course radiation therapy followed by a delayed surgery. So after that, there comes a lot of guidelines that how to personalize these treatment, when to choose short course radiation, when to choose long course radiation, and what should be the ideal time to surgery. So this is the ASCO 22 protocol, which uh, uh, I wouldn't say protocol, it is an algorithm which they had suggested. And basically what they wanted to say that T1, T2, without any threatened CRM, high rectal surgery, and a good quality TME is the answer. 
T2, T3A without threatened CRM, mid-rectal short-course radiation therapy with immediate or delayed TME, and uh, T3B are higher with node positive, lower tumors than long-course CTRT and followed by TME. Elderly patients, of course, we are generally doing short-course radiation therapy. And these are the SMO recommendations. So this is also more or less the same. So the conclusion is short-course radiation is short and flexible schedule. Selection of short-course radiation, mid-rectal cancers with no involvement of sphincters, CRM-free, TMA should enable a curative resection negative margin. Short course radiation therapy with delay in surgery gives a good tumor shrinkage, good RT response, TRG4 in the duaduct system, or a pathological complete response rate is associated with the superior overall survival and time to recurrence. And this is how the radiation field or the isodose looks like. So they are very safe for the normal organs also. So we have now guidelines for IMRT for short course radiation therapy. So many times the surgeons are quite uh, apprehensive that how it would be like to operate. So this is for them, the, the, your surgery, surgery, we are taking care of your patients while you send them for the surgery. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions for this? So uh, most of the times we do end up because probably because of our patient profile that we see bulky tumors, we do give long course yes, uh, yes. chemotherapies. Uh, yes. Radiotherapy. Yeah, that's what. So uh, 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 sorry. the yeah. only thing is that uh, you showed that slide, the selection criteria. And if you can go back to that particular slide where it mentions that uh, the, the, C, the selection criteria for short course, you have just mentioned that the CRM should be free and the surgeon, the, the margins yes, uh, yes, for the TME. Yes, yes. Now, uh, with, with the eventual prior historical data showing that eventually the local control is good enough, hmm. uh, yes. otherwise also. Yes. And with the, with, with the, the sort of uh, lacuna which was there uh, earlier with the short course that, okay, you go immediately to surgery and there was no chemotherapy answer. And with this uh, Rapido hmm. giving this answer now, yes, yes. Uh, is that selection criteria the one yes, you should? You are right. Very, 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 very rightly pointed. Yes, you are right. Uh, the CRM no longer holds true. But I think they have placed it because not all hospitals have a large volume. They are not large volume centers. So probably those who do not have that kind uh, number of patients where the surgeons are not very sure, then they should probably hold back from operating where the CRM is threatened. But yet, but yes, we also, we are, for us, no longer the CRM positive, also we are taking for short course radiation therapy. Yeah, very rightly pointed. Concept of? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yes, we are following the same uh, protocol as that. In fact, we had started doing it long before because not by choice, but there were patients who did very well to radiation. They didn't want to go for surgery. So we had uh, selected these patients and kept them on follow up. So, uh, but uh, ultimately it came down to the same. We were following the rapid protocol. There is some, uh, some people, uh, they say that for the total European should have short course, should no, no, no. We are giving almost, except tumors who are, like I said, who are where the sphincter is involved. And, uh, but that too, many even sphincter free involved, we are giving short course. But uh, theoretically, yes, the uh, sphincter involved very low tumors and large tumors, they may be given long course CTRT because the um, tumor uh, downstaging has been seen better with a long course CTRT. That is only, that is the only reason. Yes. Yeah. So you mentioned, ma'am, that the Rapido is what you are following yes, most of yes. the times at RGCI. And uh, the where, which patient would you describe for Prodig 23? The which patient, patient would you describe the, for? Uh, Prodig 23 uh, study where TNT again was given where they, we initiate with chemotherapy and then give the long course and then the surgery. Uh, I the, think the that other TNT 
Right. Yeah. So what you I, what I understand you want to uh, you want to ask is which there, are the patients? There are these two trials in the TNT when we talk about yes. the, the rapido. Yes. Where the short course was there, and then the yeah uh, the the other uh, prodigy. Uh, 23 yeah. trial yeah now where the initial initiating part is chemotherapy yes and then you go for re- chemo rt the long course chemo radiation yeah. yes so uh, if in case you have to select hmm. the patient see in like in our uh, institute all these patients all rectal cancer patients they are taken in the rectal cancer t- um, rectal tumor tumor board so most of them all in fact long course we are not giving at all they're all almost 99.9 percent they are short course radiation therapy followed by four cycles of chemo- chemotherapy and then reassess for surgery so this is almost blanket we are doing okay ma'am thank you so much ma'am for that much clarity for this short course versus long course rt ma'am it is a very thank good you. thank you learning for us also ma'am thank you, thank you ma'am